though you share a big border. I'm a political scientist and I teach in Mexican politics, Latin American politics, and the relationship of the United States and Mexico. The focus of my research was understanding violence with two explanations. If it's more an institutional problem when you have violence, or if it's more something that has to do with poverty and inequality. I started to do some research before coming here, and I kind of had the sense that if you wanted to understand what's going on, we have to start from here, from Tamaulipas, from this region. The strategy to fight drugs. I got a position here and I started to, to study this, this transition. I mean, this different kind of violence of what's going on in the northern part of Mexico. We have to understand what is driving this other kind of violence. What are the dynamics? And some of the dynamics involve the United States. When the new president of Mexico uh, arrived to power, he declared a so-called war on drugs and he brought the military to participate in the war against drugs. At that time, things changed a lot in the, in the country. That has to do with the new approach to fight drug trafficking in Mexico. It has to do with new actors, I mean, with new actors appearing. And it has to do with a different kind of relationship with the United States and the United States with the world. This is, this is basically what, what I am trying to, to understand. It's a perfect place for drug trafficking, human trafficking, and armed trafficking. And the place that, that the state of San Bolivas occupies also, it's like a link with several other countries from Latin America, especially 2010 the drug trafficking organizations and the problems and the, I mean, the division between the CETAS and the Gulf Cartel presented a different panorama in the states. When this, these two organizations broke apart, when they broke a pact they had, you could see the violence increasing. One of the factors involved is the endemic corruption. And then the corruption that at some point worked very well. The corruption was institutionalized in the state of Tamaulipas. The local police, the state police were all involved in a way. But now you have two different organizations that they are fighting for that, for the control of the state. But the exponential increase in violence, the almost 35,000 people uh, killed uh, because of drug trafficking issues. Several other people have been caught in the middle of the fights between the drug cartels or, or the fights between drug cartel organization and the Mexican army. The strategy of the Mexican government is not working, but it's a phenomenon that is really affecting not only stability in the country, but also economics on the border. The Moros, it's a very important plaza because it's strategically located. All the people in, in, in Matamoros, students that come here or people that you know, everybody has a story, they know somebody, they have observed something, they have experienced a certain event. I understand it's a very dangerous area, but it's a very dangerous work, but I think there must be somebody to be doing this just to try to, to understand because this can help the, per the people who, who are really trying to to end up with this violence. What I am trying to do is to understand the different weight of the different explanations of violence. And so if I understand that, and if I present this information, there must be some material for other people who do policy. And so they know where to focus when they try to solve a problem, when they try to create a strategy. People from this community, it's interested. People from both communities, and it's a shared problem. We have shared sure responsibilities in the problems. And this is a place where we can start bringing people here to discuss, to open this dialogue between the two nations.